up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. So let me say this about the Clippers before I talk about Luka Doncic. Man, at least you have to give praise to the Clippers for competing in these games. You know, the fact that the Clippers have a better record than the Los Angeles Lakers, despite not having Kawhi Leonard all of this season and without having Paul George for much of this season, is a testament to how hard this team is playing. Their, their intensity, uh, you know, their energy in a lot of these contests. And, you know, they're in a lot of these games that they're losing. They're in a lot of them. And this game came down to the wire, literally, you know, um, the last game. So, shout out to the Clippers. However, having said all of that, man, Luka Doncic owns the Clippers. Just came off of a 51-point game against this team in a rematch right back with this team he drops 45 on them in a relatively low scoring game for this era misses the what would have been the game winner um and you know when you look at the fact that Luca who was absolutely on fire in that 51 point a mosaic that he put on against them. This game was a little bit less efficient. Uh, the first game was 17 and 26 going for his 51. This game he was 15 and 33 going for his 45. So it took him more shots to get his points. Um, and he had seven turnovers. Seven. You know. But, you know, like I said before, only turnovers only matter when Russell Rushbrook are committed, apparently. Only when Russell Westbrook commits turnovers do people give a fuck. But still, Luka Doncic owns the fucking Clippers, man. Going back to uh, that playoff stretch that he had back in, was that 2000? Was it during the bubble, I think? When, you know, the Clippers had problems eliminating uh, the Mavericks in that first round series. And then last year, it was more of the same, you know. They struggled. They just could not stop Luka Doncic. And we've seen the same thing in this series. He has to have, he has to be averaging the most points of his career. If you look at all the points he's averaging for, toward each franchise, he has to average the most points toward the uh, Clippers. Last time I saw it, I think he was averaging 32 points a game against the Clippers. And I don't think that was including the 51 and the 45-point game. So Luka's probably averaging 33 points a game against the Clippers. This is a guy whose career average is probably somewhere around 23, 24 points a night. It's crazy, man. It's crazy what he's doing against this team. Um, Now, to be fair, they don't have their two best players, but we've also seen Luka do this to them when they had their two best players. So, you know, do they need to implement some type of rules for this guy or something, man? Um, but then again, you know, I don't even know if it's just that, man. I think it's – the Clippers are just – one of the things I remember about the Clippers and their recent playoff runs – is that they had an inability to stop the other team's best player. You know, whether it was Luka Doncic going off against them, whether it was Jamal Murray going up, uh, going off against them, or whether it was, you know, Donovan Mitchell going off against them, they just could not stop the other player's uh, best star. Um, so... Shout out once again to Luka Doncic as he shows once again that he owns the Clippers. And he is going to be a star in this league. He is definitely going to be a big time star in this, in this league. Man. You, know, you can't take it away from him. He whines and cries about a lot of shit. He's not in the best shape of his career. But as I said before, if you can produce like this, you can eat all the hamburgers and hot dogs and as long as you can come, come, as long as you're putting up numbers like this, as long as you're carrying a team like this, you can eat whatever the fuck you want to eat. 